Hello, this is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy uh, Baseball Talk. Baseball is kind of all we have now. I've been on a 30-day ban thanks to Facebook's uh, new and wonderful censorship policies. I was never censored in the first 12 years that I was on Facebook. And now all of a sudden I've got four in about a five or six month span. Um, I, I really think that Facebook needs to, needs to reevaluate this. I think they need to allow for a defense, um, allow for uh, some context, you know, take into context what is being said and why it's being said. And, um, and give you an opportunity to edit or delete the comment, or, or they could they could just delete it themselves instead of instead of doing all this banning. I'm really getting tired of it. I'm uh, trying to, to trying to uh, transition all my all my stuff over to YouTube. Um, so again, I'm going to do a, a shameless plug here. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bronson B A M N Allen. That's capital B, capital A, capital M, capital N, Allen on YouTube where you can find um, daily fantasy content and exclusive travel footage from my from all my traveling that I've been doing. Um, there's quite a few neat little videos uh, from Alaska that I've got up there for you guys. So check that out. Well obviously if you're watching this you obviously you already have subscribed or you're at least viewing the video on YouTube and I appreciate you so much. Thanks thank you so much um, for helping me along in my journey um, over these last few months as I've been transitioning into, you know, doing these, these daily fantasy videos. Um, as I mentioned, it's only baseball. There's not a whole lot to talk about baseball, so I'm gonna have to do some other things to fill some, fill some time. Um, but um, this is gonna do a, a plug, uh, free advertising for Boneyard Beer here in um, Oregon. My favorite local brewery, uh, they're based in Bend. Um, for those of you who live outside of Oregon. Bend is a wonderful little town that you should definitely visit. And for those of you who are here in Oregon who, you know, I'm sure you've heard of Bend, but if you haven't been to Bend, you should check Bend out and you should definitely stop by Boneyard. Get yourself some Diablo Rojo, my favorite beer by them. I was so happy to find a six pack available in the grocery store the other day. I couldn't pass on buying it, even though I hardly drink anymore because I work, that's my work schedule. Like, uh, I just don't, I'm just not interested, real interested in drinking very often. But uh, I'm gonna have one, crack one open here and share it with you guys. Cheers. Ah, delicious, smooth. One of my favorite red ales I ever made. And I'm a big, big believer, big lover of red ales. I know that not a lot of people know where they are, even heard of them. I'll be happy to talk red ales with you. I'll be happy to talk fantasy sports. I'll be happy to talk travels. Any questions you've got, please, you can post a comment. You can hit me up on my DMs, um, whatever. Um, we'll get to the we'll get to the fantasy subjects here shortly. I did just recently return from Alaska. I had an awesome time. I went to Anchorage and I went to the Kenai 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 Peninsula uh, down to Seward, which is right on the Gulf Gulf Coast of Alaska, Southeast Alaska. Um, Alaska was so much better than I ever anticipated. I was kind of you know I I, I was kind of expecting like a conservative, uh, rustic place in the middle kind of in the middle of nowhere but Anchorage is a very modern hip liberal uh big city it's the only city in Alaska that has it's the only city in Alaska honestly the uh, Anchorage has a, a population of roughly 300,000 which isn't huge um it's like basically the size of Eugene uh or Vancouver where I currently live but um it's just it was incredible there it was I I it's, Anchorage is the best kept secret in the country. You all need to visit it for yourselves. Uh, in the summertime, it's they get more sun than anywhere else because the sun doesn't go down till after 11 p.m. and it comes up around 5 a.m. So you're getting sun, all that sunlight all day long. It was a wonderful experience. It was 65. It was in the mid 60s. The whole weekend I was there it was wonderful. It felt like uh, an 80 degree down, day down here. It was beautiful and. Uh, you know, in the wintertime, you talk to the locals, sure, you're gonna get some snow when they're surrounded by four uh, mountain ranges, which is absolutely beautiful. The Anchorage Airport, by the way, Ted Stevens International Airport is absolutely the best airport I've ever been in, by far. I mean, I, I'm really biased towards Portland, but uh, the Anchorage Airport is, is incredible. Not very big either, so it's easy to find your way around, but uh, nonetheless, 
I, I think Anchorage is a place that everybody needs to visit. And as I was saying, in the winter time, the snow they get a little bit of snow, but they're not they're not getting the kind of snow that you think they're getting. Um, they're kind of in a it's a coastal inlet, a coastal town there in Anchorage, so the, the the climate's a little bit more moderate than it is say up in the interior of Alaska. Um, you know, which is what most of us think of Alaska as like Fairbanks, you know, the place where they get 30 days of night and all the blistering, blustery, miserable cold. Anchorage is a little bit more temperate, a little bit more moderate, a little bit more rain, uh, but if you're from Portland and Pacific Northwest, that's nothing new. Uh, a little bit more snow than you're going to get down here, obviously, but it's not going to be an overwhelming amount. In fact, there's probably some places in the Midwest that probably get more snow than Anchorage does. Um, but yeah, the Southeast Alaska that I saw was amazing. I went to the Kenai Fjords, Kenai, sorry, I keep mispronouncing it, it's Kenai. Kenai Fjords National Park, went on a, 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 a boat tour of that. It was a six hour tour, incredible, incredible experience. I'm glad I didn't skimp on that. It was 150 bucks, uh, the best 150 bucks I've ever spent. In my entire life. Fortunately, I didn't see a moose. I really wanted to see a moose there, um, but I am going to Montana this weekend with my parents, actually, to Glacier National Park or Yellowstone. We haven't officially decided yet. My parents aren't the best planners. This was their trip. Uh, it's kind of a spur of the moment thing for me. I found plane tickets for $78 round trip airfare, so that was pretty exciting to me. I couldn't pass on that opportunity to go out there and spend the weekend with them in Montana, um, as they do. Uh, they're working to transition their lives there from Oregon. Um, as they get older, that's where they would like to retire to. They have illusions that I'm going to follow them out there, but they probably will not go to Montana. But it is a beautiful place to visit. I'll always come visit, especially if I could find $78 airfare, which um, I can because Allegiant Air, Allegiant Air is the air the airplane, which I've never flown before. I'm sure it's not going to be the greatest experience, but it's only an hour and 20 minute flight. I can I can bear through the lack of weight room and all that stuff for that length of time. Um, but they do fly out of Portland to Missoula very regularly, every day, in fact. So getting out to Missoula, Montana from Portland will never be a problem um, for me. So it'll be nice that I can go visit my parents cheaply anytime I want to, basically. I'm going to Montana, hoping to see a moose out there in Glacier National Park or in Yellowstone. Um, in the Kenai Fjords National Park, I did see some, we did, it wasn't supposed to be a whale washing tour, but we ended up doing a lot of whale washing because the orcas were out feeding. Um, so we saw the orcas, we saw the saw some humpback whales doing their, their breaching thing. Um, saw a lot, of, a lot of puffins, a lot of birds, a lot of sea lions, which a lot of people on the, on the boat were very excited about the sea lions and me personally like i'm not trying to be a snob here but sea lions, i see sea lions all the time they hang out on the they hang, hang out at the uh the marina in newport and florence all the time and, and then you got the sea lion caves where you can go to uh, between newport and florence um one of the largest sea lion caves on the west coast um they can go to any time so i've seen lots of sea lions in my life they weren't that exciting to me to see the sea lions uh but a lot of people were very very excited about the sea lions. Um, I was excited. I was just happy that I was able to catch, get a decent shot of an orca because they were very hard to see in the, in the video they took and in the most of the pictures that I was trying to capture. Because you just because you never know where they're gonna pop up. So I'm just sitting there with the camera like this, trying to. I'm also watching, like I'm watching, but I have the camera up just in case. So when I see it pop up, I can take a picture. But you never know where they're gonna pop up. I always miss them. Uh, except I was able to catch them once though, and I'm very proud of that fact but let's I, i'm basically gonna end it but alaska was amazing it's uh i truly believe alaska is god's country he put it up in the northwest corner just out of reach just to tease everybody he doesn't want everybody knowing about it um it's but you gotta go to alaska and check it out for yourself i recommend obviously anchorage because it's the only real city in the state every other town uh fairbanks did you know the other cities in Alaska have about 30,000, 30, 35,000 people, which are not cities, those are towns. Anchorage is the only city. I recommend seeing Anchorage. I recommend seeing Seward. Seward is, was absolutely breathtaking. And uh, I recommend the Kenai Fjords National Park Tour as well. But let's get into it. I've been doing a lot of talking. I got 30 days to catch up on, but let's get to the to the baseball. Um, uh, start. Let's start with Kyle Gibson. 
the Texas Rangers pitchers is having a pretty fantastic year, surprisingly. He's coming off the injured list tomorrow. He'll be able he'll be uh, able to uh, to make a start for you tomorrow. Um, and let's t talk about a disappointing player real quick, Luis Castillo of the Reds. Nobody, um, Luis Castillo historically has has never been as good as as I think he's been overhyped. Excuse me, in drafts for a lot of years. But I, I think he is a pretty decent pitcher. He's consistent. He's durable. He gets strikeouts. But what, for whatever reason, this year it's just not working out. He's not even. Uh, he's made it's two months into the season, and his points total is in the negatives. That's very bad. Um, I can't believe his ownership is still over 50%, to be honest with you. Uh, but he is making a start tomorrow as well. Um, and we'll see, what, we'll see how he does. But uh, continuation of how I used to do these things, steaming and streaming. Let's get to the steaming hot pit, steaming high hitters, which I should have. I have a plethora of options now because I haven't done this in 30 days. Let's five, I'll give you five pitchers. I mean, five hitters for you. We'll start with the catcher, Jason Stallings of the Pirates. I know the Pirates are a laughing stock. I don't know if you guys saw that Javi Baez uh, play, the Javi Baez debacle from, uh, I think it was about a week ago now, um, where the first baseman had two outs, and all he had to do was tag first base. And he got stuck in a rundown, and Javi Baez somehow made it to second place, second base. It was, it was incredible to see, but uh, Pittsburgh's so terrible. Um, but anyways, Jason Stallings is very quietly putting up a decent uh, top 10 season at the catcher position in head-to-head -head formats. A couple of infielders for you. Ty France is back off the injured list for the Mariners, and he's back hitting well. Um, I remember he started out the season pretty well, and then he's struggling really bad, and he got hurt, and now he's back off the injured list, and now he's, he's hitting well again, so he's worth having because he provides you a lot of positional versatility. Another infielder for you to consider, Josh Fuentes of the Rockies. He gives you um, depth at the two corner positions, which the two corner positions, at, if you remember from when the season started, I mentioned the first base, third base, are the two keystones to your fantasy baseball lineup. He can provide you help in both of those spots. A couple of outfielders, Tyler O'Neill of the Cardinals, really coming on a lot lately, really getting more playing time. Um, he should be he should be a, a priority add in every league you're in. And Audible Herrera is battering the ball about as well as he batters girlfriends. So. Um, I know that was probably an insensitive joke, but I think it was funny. I think it was witty. I, I, I'll never pass up an opportunity to show off my, my fantastic wit. Um, so, yeah, he's hitting really well since he was reinstated from the commissioner's exempt place or suspended list. Whatever it is he that he wasn't playing, um, he's back, and he is hitting really well. He's definitely an outfielder you should have. Um, if you can put the morality of of what of what he's done in the past aside, and uh, accept the fact that you need him to help you win in your fan, in your fantasy baseball leagues. For the pitchers, um, not a great selection, but I, I gave you five anyway. We're gonna start with Cody Poteet of the Marlins. He's facing the Pirates. Cody Poteet is a rookie who's been outstanding to start the year, except for his, um, you know kind of anticipated struggles against the Red Sox in his last outing, but he, other than that, he's been good, and he should get back on track against the laughing stock Pittsburgh Pirates. Josh Fleming of Tampa Bay, um, strikeout rate, not great, but um, the likelihood of him getting a win against the Rangers is very high, and he'll probably put together a quality start, um, so that's those are stats worth having. Spencer Turnbull of the White Sox is having in the midst of an outstanding stretch of games. Um, I, I'm aware the White Sox are, a, are a, good, a good hitting team, so there are obviously some concerns there. But Spencer Turnbull is worth taking a chance on in a, in a day that's a little bit weaker with streaming options. Um, Quang Hyun Kim of the Cardinals against the Reds. Uh, the potential, uh, we know that Quang Hyun Kim is a moderately decent pitcher, so he's, he's worth taking a chance on against the Reds. Um, tomorrow and my, my dark horse pitcher that I, I kind of like Keegan Aiken of the Orioles against the the Cleveland Indians the Cleveland Indians have been a no hit twice so far this year um, which which is kind of ignominious because the Mariners and Rangers have both been no hit twice so there's only been six I shouldn't say only six no hitters through the first two months of the season is pretty pretty amazing it's a very high number but uh, the fact that there, there's only two, two teams who have been, or three teams who have been no hit this year, and they've both been no hit. They've all been no hit twice, and no other team has 
been had a no hitter thrown against them yet. It's it's really weird, a really weird circumstance. But um, so Keegan Aiken having a good start against a, a very hapless Indians lineup is is very possible tomorrow. So he's worth uh, to me uh, if I'm really needing some help, really looking for some pitching. Uh, I'm really behind. I need a high risk, high reward investment. Keegan Aiken is the one to look at. So. That's it. That's all I got for you guys. I hope that you guys will, will migrate over from Facebook to YouTube and subscribe to my videos. Uh, otherwise, I don't know why I'm wasting almost 16 minutes of my precious free time filming this and uh, putting the information out there into the ether um, if no one's going to watch it. But uh, I do appreciate the, those elite few, the select few who have chosen to, to support me and help me on my journey um, to... Uh, I guess social media relevance. I don't. I don't know. I'm just doing this because it's my passion and I have fun with it. Uh, but it is nice to know that people are watching and supporting and using the information. So, as always, peace, love, and nacho fries. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow.